Welcome to a new episode of Drops of Science, the multilingual scientific podcast that selects for you the latest news from the natural sciences. With today's episode, number 12, we celebrate a special milestone together. This is the first anniversary of the podcast. It's a significant moment for us because it represents a year of explorations, discoveries and sharing that wouldn't have continued without you pushing us to continue this journey into scientific knowledge, episode after episode. So a heartfelt thank you to all of you, our dear listeners, who follow and support us from every corner of the world. To make this episode truly unique, we decided to do something slightly different from the usual. We will still talk about new discoveries, but with a common theme, biodiversity, the diversity of life. Today, we will tell you about some of the most recent species discovered, a tribute to the richness of nature and the wonder of discovery. And the first discovery takes us back in time. We are in China, specifically in Denjiang Formation, located in Chongjing Municipality in southwestern China where a partial skeleton of a single individual was found, including parts of the skull, hips and hind limbs. This skeleton turned out to be unlike anything previously known. A careful morphological analysis in laboratory allowed scientists to identify that the remains belonged to a species new to science. It was named Kianjangsaurus changenshi. The name means Kianjang lizard, referring to the place where it was found, while Chang Shengji honors Wan Changsheng, the first to formally report the presence of Cretaceous dinosaurs fossils in Chongqing. Kianjangsaurus Changsheng dates back to the late Cretaceous, probably between the Campanian and the Maastrichtian stages, although the precise dating remains uncertain. With an estimated length of about 8 meters, this dinosaur exhibits a unique combination of characteristics, some typical of the non-adrosaurid adrosauroids and others more common among true adrosaurids. In other words, Kianjangsaurus belongs to the broader group of adrosauroids, but lacks all the distinctive features of the more specialized adrosaurid subgroup. Phylogenetic analysis revealed that this species is closely related to Plesioadros, but lies outside the main adrosaurid group. This makes the fossil an interesting example of transitional evolution between non-adrosaurid adrosauroids and true adrosaurids. The discovery provides new insight into the interchange of dinosaur faunas across East Asia during the late Cretaceous. Although it is the first non-avian dinosaur described from the Zhenjiang formation, other fossils, including those of Titanosaurus and Tyrannosauroids, have been found in the same area suggesting a diverse faunal community in this ancient ecosystem. We stay in China, where in March 2024, a field expedition in Nandang County, Guanxi Chuang Autonomous Region, led to the discovery of a new fern species, Chirtomium adenotricum. This discovery represents an important addition to the botanical diversity of the genus Chirtomium, which comprises about 40 species, 31 of which are native to China. During the field surveys, researchers almost accidentally found a unique population of Chirtomium, consisting of only 10 individuals, with distinctive morphologies compared to other species in the genus. These plants were found exclusively on cliffs in a ravine at an altitude of 470 meters. Driven by scientific curiosity, the researchers conducted further observations and examined numerous Chirtomium specimens preserved in various herbaria. They also consulted relevant literature to ensure accurate identification and to deepen the understanding of the taxonomic status of this potential new species. Thanks to these efforts, scientists confirmed that this is indeed a new and unique discovery. Chirtonium adenotricum is recognizable by its sparsely glandular stem, a morphological feature that clearly distinguishes it from the other ferns in the genus Chirtomium. The new scientific name, adenotricum, is derived from Greek. Adeno, meaning gland, and tricum, meaning hair, reflecting the distinctive characteristic of the fern stem, which has sparsely glandular hairs compared to other species in the genus. 
due to its limited distribution, low number of individuals and the vulnerability of its habitat, extremely fragile and potentially submerged during the rainy season, making its conservation even more critical, Chirtomima denutricum has been classified as critically endangered, according to the criteria established by the Red List of Threatened Species of the International Union for Conservation of Nature. We remain in the realm of small and rare plants, this time in Ecuador. During an expedition on the western slopes of the Andes near Santo Domingo, a group of researchers made an extraordinary discovery, a very rare plant. As they were driving, the group stopped to investigate a small section of forest after obtaining permission from the landowner, who was curious about their interest. The plant, just 5 cm tall, was found growing on a boulder in a region that has seen the destruction of much of its original forest, with an estimated loss of between 70 and 97 percent, due to agriculture and past government deforestation policies. The discovery site, known as Sentinela, was once part of a vast, dense tropical forest, now mostly cleared for agriculture. Experts estimate that a significant percentage of the original forest in western Ecuador has been lost since the mid-20th century. The remaining fragments of the Sentinela forest are now isolated and surrounded by agricultural land, where landowners are required to clear at least half of their land to demonstrate active use and retain ownership. The small plant, characterized by green leaves with a purple underside and tiny white flowers, was identified as a new species and was named Amarophyllon miraculum, a name that reflects the miracle of its discovery in these rare forest fragments. Currently, only two populations of Amarophyllon miraculum are known, both located in small protected areas. The heroic efforts of local landowners who have preserved the small forest fragments, usually around waterfalls, have been crucial for the conservation of these forest remains. Very important are also the current conservation initiatives by foundations and academic institutions. Now we move on the currently living animals. A team of researchers has described a new species of polychete, which, along with clitellates, that includes earthworms, belongs to the Philum anellida. This new species, named Cryptoketosilis imitatio, was discovered on octocoral corals of the genus Dendroneftia in Vietnam and Japan and represents an exceptional discovery in the world of marine biology. Cryptoketosilis imitatio is particularly interesting because it mimics the appearance of nudibranchs, gastropod mollusks, known for their bright warning colors that signal effective defense against predators. Until now, no imitators had been found among annelids, making this discovery truly unique. This species stands out for its unique morphological adaptations. It has a reduced number of body segments, simple hook sete hidden within the parapodia, and large, brightly colored antennae and fusiform cirri. The coloration of these appendages, which includes a dark red inner zone with numerous white spots and bright yellow tips, helps mimic the appearance of a nudibranch, deterring potential predators. This animal was found in small numbers with four specimens collected in Japan and one in Vietnam, and lives in close association with Dendroneftia corals. However, it is unclear whether this species is a symbiont, a specialized predator, or both. The hidden hooked sete, whose function remains unclear, could play an important role in this relationship, and further studies will be necessary to fully understand its behavior and ecological role. A fascinating aspect of the discovery is the possibility that Cryptoketosilis imitatio employs Mullerian or Batesian mimicry strategies, depending on the function of its dorsal glands. If these glands produce or store toxic substances, the species would be a Mullerian mimic. If they don't have a defensive role, this species would be a Batesian mimic. This is because in Mullerian mimicry, all involved species are dangerous and share a common warning signal, while in Batesian mimicry, a harmless species mimics a dangerous one to benefit from the protection offered by the deception. Both cases would represent the first known example of such strategies among benthic annelids. A new species of gecko, named Nactus simacal, has been recently discovered on the island of Dawan, located in the northern part of the Torres Strait between Cape York Peninsula in Australia and the southern coast of Papua New Guinea. 
This discovery represents an important addition to the biodiversity of the Torres Strait Islands, where the vertebrate fauna is a unique and relatively impoverished mix of species from Australia and New Guinea. Nactus simacal is a gecko with distinctive characteristics, featuring a slender and elongated body and a banded pattern that sets it apart from other species in the genus Nactus. This animal was assigned to the genus based on mitochondrial DNA, genetic analysis, and specific morphological traits including slender toes without pads, fine dorsal scales with rows of enlarged tubercles, and the presence of preanal pores in males. This saxicoline gecko, which lives in habitats of large accumulated boulders, appears to be closely linked to the granite geomorphology of Dawan Island. The discovery of Nactus simacal is also significant because it represents only the second vertebrate species described as endemic to the Torres Strait Island. The first, the Bramble K. meromis, meromis rubicola, a small rodent, was known only from Bramble K and is now considered extinct. In contrast, Nactus simacal is currently known only from a small area of Dawan Island, and further research is needed to assess its distribution, potential threat, and conservation status. We conclude with the discovery of three extremely unique new insect species belonging to the group of Weta, iconic insects from New Zealand. These species, belonging to two newly described genera, have been identified as Crux buddhica, Crux eggi, and Occulta stella morgana. The latest was found in the coal fields of the Deniston Plateau on the west coast of New Zealand. This species is small, very dark, and has extraordinary frame-like white markings on its head. The genus name, Occulta stella, means hidden star, a tribute to the difficulty in locating this species. The species was dedicated to orthopterist Mary Morgan Richards in recognition of her significant contribution to the ecology and systematics of New Zealand's Raphidophoridae and Anostostomatidae, two families of Weta. The other two species, Crux buddhica and Crux eggi, were discovered on Rakura, Stewart Island. The genus Crux is named after the Southern Cross constellation, a symbol of the southern sky. Crux Boudica was named after the Queen of the Iceni, who led a revolt against the Romans in the 1st century Anno Domini. This species is characterized by females with an entire set of spines and spikes protruding from their abdomen, likely used to control reproductive activities with males. Crux Heggi was named after orthopterist Danilo Hegg, who collected specimens of this species and made significant contributions to the revision of Raphidophoridae in New Zealand. Weta are orthopterans, distant relatives of grasshoppers and crickets, and are considered a symbol of New Zealand fauna. The name Weta is borrowed from the Maori language, where this term specifically identifies these animals. Research has shown that Weta began to thrive and evolve shortly after the formation of New Zealand, over 16 million years ago. With Weta species, we conclude this anniversary episode of Drops of Science. Thank you for joining us in this special episode, and especially for accompanying us throughout this first year of scientific exploration. See you soon, and as usual, good science!